Here's the second thing, is that dreamers don't hear how everyone else hears. One of the things, I love jazz. Have you ever listened to jazz? I love jazz. Lo not smooth jazz either. Smooth jazz isn't jazz. Smooth jazz is just dentist music. That's all that is. I'm talking about jazz. I'm about like chaos jazz, where like six dudes get together and don't nobody know what anybody else is going to play. You know what I'm talking about? Come here. Hey, let's, hey we're going to do a two and a four. Arm Ready? One, two, three, go. And it's like the sax player is playing one thing, and the trumpet player is playing another thing, and then the guy on the snare drum has a little shh. You know, I don't even know how he makes that sound, but he's making a sound that nobody knows. It's just and people who know music are like, oh, that's my jam. <laughs> people who don't know music are like, what is going on? What is this? Like, what, did they know that they were playing today? Is this concert? Was this impromptu? Was this a surprise? The people who are dreamers, they hear different than other people hear. And so where everyone else takes it personal that someone's being hurtful, dreamers take it personal that those people have been hurt. And when somebody says something ugly to them, they don't get offended because they know it's not them. They know it's somebody who said something to somebody who said something to somebody who did something to somebody, and along the way, that person just got so hurt that they've begun to lash out. Yeah. And you can either get offended by what they say, or you can get offended for what they say. And you can try to bring help, and you can try to bring healing. That's what dreamers do. And that's why St. Paul said, those of us who are strong, we have an obligation to bear with the failings of those who are weak. Listen, it's not your job to be offended. It's your job to be helpful. It's your job to love people, because that's what dreamers do. Here's the third. Dreamers don't believe how everyone else believes. Now, one of the things, if you come here for a minute, is you're going to find out one of our lines is we're a church for anybody, but we're not a church for everybody. Anybody is welcome to come here, but not everybody's going to jive with what it is that we say. Not everybody's going to jive with what it is that we do, because here's what we've discovered along the way, is that people are just the priority. God is all about people. And all the religious teachers in Jesus' day had like a certain belief system. They actually had an order unto which they thought that life should happen. And they, they said, here's the order of obedience according to Scripture. This is how they viewed it. They said, number one, you should love God. Number two, you should honor the Sabbath and you should keep it holy. You should obey the Sabbath. Number two, or three, you should honor the temple. The temple is most important. And then once you've begun to honor the temple, your whole life should be pure. Everything that you say and everything that you do, it should be pure. It should be spotless. It should be blameless. And then after all of that, you should love your neighbor. And which is why they determined that they could treat people however they wanted. They could treat, maybe you've been in an environment where they felt like they could treat you poorly in the name of the church. And that's not Jesus' fault, and it's not God's fault. It's the fault of a religious leader who had their priorities out of whack. And that's why they felt like they could treat people poorly in the name of the church, because to them, their interpretation was the temple or the church was more important than people. To which Jesus came along and he said, no, nah, hold up, player. that's not, no, nah, that's not the order. That's not, that ain't even how God, no, I, when I, listen, first of all, I wrote this. You ever have somebody take your words out of context? Somebody take your words out of order and shift them around? Kids have a way of doing that. And so you, all the kids are like, what? Hold up a minute. You're going to get candy. You're fine. And so Jesus came along, and here's what he said. He said, uh-uh, no, hold up. This is the order. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. He said, this is the first and the greatest command. To which everybody said, oh yeah, bingo, yep, we already know that. Been teaching that for a couple thousand years. We've been teaching that since we came through the Red Sea. So whatever, you ain't got nothing new to say. And so then Jesus said, oh, but let's listen to this now. Here's the second, and this command, these words were literally revolutionary. He said, this is equally as important God was, Jesus was literally saying, what I'm about to tell you is equal with you loving God. Love your neighbor as yourself. He said all the laws, like the 600 plus laws that have been narrowed down to the 10, all of those and all the teachings of the prophets that you've run your whole life off of, all of those things hang. They teeter on these two commands. And here's the deal. We've read that over time, and we thought that Jesus had said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Like, you're supposed to love your neighbor the way that you love yourself. But that's not what he was saying, because he knew they were just as insecure as you and I are. He was saying this, love those people because you're just like them. 
you've just put a different angle on your failure than you did on their failure because you can't imagine yourself doing what they do. You can't imagine yourself saying what they say. And so we judge people predicated upon their actions when we want people to judge us predicated on our intentions. And here's the deal. When you come in here, you're going to find that we love people that you might avoid. We love people that maybe you don't agree with. We love people with different lifestyles than we have and different religious beliefs than we have who will wear different outfits than we will do because here's what we know that this book will never return void. That's not my opinion. That's this opinion. And that if you take somebody who has a different lifestyle than you and, and you give them the law with love, pretty soon the love of the law becomes the love of their life. And so God said, Jesus said, will you just cut them some slack? Cut them the same slack that you want them to cut you. Because dreamers realize that policies and positions and politics aren't as important as people.